Hi, this is Samson. Today I'm gonna talk about Hong Kong English. So I will start this video by speaking a bit of Hong Kong English. Very often, you can tell the place of origin of someone by listening to his English accent. Hong Kong is no exception. So right now I'm speaking a Hong Kong accent, so I should sound like your friends from Hong Kong. But what is a Hong Kong accent actually? And why it sounds like a Hong Kong accent? Today, I will answer these questions. So first, I will introduce the background of Hong Kong accent, and then I will analyze its linguistic features. And finally, I will share some personal opinion about Hong Kong accent. Let's have some background information first. Hong Kong had been a British colony until 1997. While most of the people communicated in Cantonese, English had been the administrative language and also the language of higher education. Nowadays, according to the Hong Kong Basic Law, Chinese and English are the official languages of Hong Kong. However, it doesn't specify which spoken variety of Chinese, Mandarin or Cantonese is official. Statistical data shows that nearly 90% of the people in Hong Kong speak Cantonese as their native language and nearly 50% of the people are proficient in English. This bilingual environment led to the emergence of Hong Kong English. English education begins from kindergarten in Hong Kong. Most kindergarten teach most subjects in Cantonese, but they also have English as a main subject. This is also true for primary schools. For secondary schools, there are two types of them depending on their teaching language. One of them is called EMI schools, which stands for English as a medium of instruction. In EMI schools, most subjects are taught in English except a few such as the Chinese language and the Chinese history. The other type is CMI schools. It stands for Chinese as a medium of instruction. As its name suggests, most subjects are taught in Chinese language except for English language subject. However, again, it doesn't specify which variety of Chinese, Cantonese, or Mandarin it is. So for me, I studied in an EMI school, so I remembered the chemical elements in English rather than Cantonese. In universities, English becomes the dominant teaching language. It is because there are many international professors and students. So for me, I also worked in an international company in Hong Kong, so I used to speak English at work too. As I just mentioned, you may already notice that Hong Kong English is mostly used at schools. And yes, you're right. So one fundamental difference between Hong Kong English and other English varieties such as Indian English or Singaporean English is that we don't speak Hong Kong English as a daily way of communication. Therefore, most people speak it as a second language and its usage is limited. So while most people write English for their homework and official documents, you almost never see a film in Hong Kong English. Usually, people favor the British or the American accent when they further their English studies. And as a result, there is no standard accent for Hong Kong English. When I worked in Hong Kong, I heard my colleagues speaking Hong Kong English. But when I carefully analyzed their accent, I found that all their accents are different, but they still conform to a certain standard, so it sounds like Hong Kong English. So in this video, I will introduce the features of Hong Kong English. Some features are more common, meaning that if one demonstrates this set of features, is probably a Hong Kong English speaker, but some of the features are less common. Even if one doesn't show this feature, he can still be a Hong Kong English speaker. In this video, I will only talk about features that are exclusively found in Hong Kong English, but not in other English varieties. And I will talk about them in the order of importance. Now let's start looking at the features. The first feature is the mid-high-low tone pattern. Since Cantonese is a tonal language, speakers adapted English intonations as lexical tones. This makes Hong Kong English special because it might be the only tonal dialect of English. I think this is the most interesting feature of Hong Kong English, so I will spend more time talking about it. 
There are three main tones: high, mid, and low tones in Hong Kong English. They are pronounced like the first, sixth, and the fourth tones in Cantonese, respectively. Now we take four as an example syllable. These three tones are pronounced as four, 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 respectively. The general rule is, for words with more than one syllable, the stressed syllable is assigned a high tone. Syllables before it take a mid tone, and syllables after it take a low tone. For words with a secondary stress, all syllables between the two stresses take a high tone. Let's listen to these words in isolation. Introduction, the syllable. Is stressed, so it takes the high tone. The syllables intro is before that, so they have the mid tone. The syllable shun comes after the stress syllable, so it takes the low tone. Communication. We have a secondary stress at the syllable mu, and a primary stress at k. Therefore, syllables between them have a high tone. The other syllables follow the general rule. When a word is not the last word of an utterance, the low tone syllables are changed to the high tone. So we have introduction with the last syllable shun in the low tone, but introduction to English with the same syllable in the high tone. Single-syllable words are trickier. Usually, nouns, adjectives, verbs, and question words take a high tone. Prepositions, connectives, and auxiliary verbs take a mid tone. Personal pronouns such as I and you may take a high tone or a mid tone, depending on the situation. Let's have some examples. Cat. Which is a noun with a high tone. Big, which is an adjective with a high tone. Go, which is a verb with a high tone. For, which is a numeral with a high tone. But we have for, which is a preposition with a mid tone. And, which is a connective with a mid tone. Will. Auxiliary verb with the mid tone. You may have noticed that the number four and the preposition four have different tones. These words are homophones in many varieties of English. However, for Hong Kong English speakers, a difference in tones means a difference in pronunciation, so they consider them as words to be pronounced differently. If someone says the preposition four. In a high tone, it would be considered wrong. In other words, it's correct to say four, but if you say four, it will sound like the number. Some other homophones distinguished by tones in Hong Kong English are buy, as in to buy something, and buy, as in by the way, there, as in. There is a pub, and there, as in their computer. And finally, we have the word when. This word has multiple meanings depending on the situation, and in Hong Kong English, we pronounce them differently depending on their meaning. So we have when as a question word, as in when is your birthday. And when, as a connective meaning, at such time as in when I am happy. Now let's look at this ambiguous English sentence. Tell me when you go home. There are two ways to pronounce the word "when" in Hong Kong English, and they result into two different meanings. The first is, "Tell me when you go home." Here. When is in the high tone, so it is a question word. Therefore, the sentence means "Tell me the time that you go home." 
you can expect the answer to be nine o'clock. The second is, tell me when you go home. Notice that when is in the mid tone, so it is a connective. The whole sentence means, "Tell me at the moment you go home." Then the other person will likely answer with, "Yes, I will tell you." Now we have shown that Hong Kong English is a tonal language. It can even distinguish homophones in international English and even ambiguous sentences. The second feature requires more technical knowledge to explain. I would call it rhyme substitution in general. Hong Kong English speakers often change the rhyme of English words so that it conforms better to the Cantonese phonology. All right, I know it still sounds very vague right now. In order to make it clear, I will divide this feature into two types and give examples for each of them. Type one. Final consonant deletion. In Cantonese, there can be at most one final consonant in a syllable. English words can contain more final consonants, as in the word lamp, in which you have m and p, and the word tasks, in which you have s k s. When Hong Kong English speakers say these words, they delete some final consonants. For example, "pes" with the final t sound deleted, "bang" with the final k sound deleted, "fat" with the final t sound deleted. However, words like "tense" and "tax" are pronounced with all final consonants, so they will be pronounced as "pens" and "pex" in Hong Kong English. So this rule doesn't always apply. In fact, this rule only deletes plosive consonants p, t, k, b, d, and g that do not immediately follow the vowel. For example, in the word "tax," pronounced as "pex" in Hong Kong English, the k sound is not deleted because it immediately follows the vowel a. The second type of this feature is diphthong plus final consonant reduction or substitution. A diphthong means a sequence of two vowels. For example, I is a diphthong because it is a sequence of the simple vowels a and e. Together, they are i. There is a change of the quality of vowel. Some words with diphthongs in English are "guy," "may," and "low." Cantonese has diphthongs too, as in the words "guy," "may," "low." In English, there are syllables that contain a diphthong and final consonants, as in "rain," "like," and "sound." This syllable structure doesn't exist in Cantonese, so. Hong Kong English speakers use different strategies to pronounce this type of words. Let's see how they are pronounced in Hong Kong English. For words ending in T or D, we have late as lay, light as light, hide as high, loud as lao. Usually, the final consonant is simply deleted. However, the same rule doesn't always apply even for the same rhyme. So we have load, pronounced as lo, with the d deleted. But we have code, pronounced as ko, which has undergone vowel reduction and coda change. It changes the final consonant from d to k. So it has become homophonous with the word "cook," as in cooking. Load and code rhyme in most English accents, but not in the Hong Kong accent. Also, the word "coat" is pronounced as "co," which is quite different from "code" as mentioned above. Now we take a look at words ending in "k." We have "cake," pronounced as "cake." 
which has undergone vowel reduction. We have like pronounced as lai or lai. Both are acceptable by Hong Kong English speakers. And in this case, the K is simply deleted. We have coke pronounced as ko, which is homophonous with the word coke as in cooking and the word code as mentioned before. As compared to T or D, words of this type tend to reduce the diphthong into a single vowel rather than deleting the final consonant. Here are words having final nasal sounds. So we start with words having N as one of the final consonants. We have rain, pronounced as ring, which is homophonous with the word ring, as in wedding ring. And we have sound, pronounced as sang, loan, pronounced as long. But the word fine is unchanged. It's pronounced as fine. The word line can be pronounced as line or lie, which is homophonous with lie, as in to tell a lie. Finally, we have point, pronounced as pawn, which is homophonous with, um, never mind, forget about it. The word time can be pronounced as time or tam, both are acceptable. And the word game, usually it's pronounced as game. And home, pronounced as home. As we've seen from the examples, even though the different nasal sounds can undergo very different changes, the nasal quality of the final consonants is usually kept. For words ending in fricative sounds like S and F, this rule never applies. For example, words like base and life are unaffected by the rule. There is an interesting consequence of this feature. We can see it in the words write and ride. In standard English, this pair of words is distinguished by the final consonants T and D. However, the vowel in write is phonetically shorter than that in write even though it doesn't cause this distinction to standard English speakers. Say it many times and you will realize that. Write, ride, write, ride, write, ride. Remember that in Hong Kong English, speakers delete the final TD sounds in this case. Then, how are the words write and write pronounced? They are write and Rai, respectively, with different vowels, but the final consonants are lost. So here you see, in standard English, this pair of words are distinguished by the different final consonants, but in Hong Kong English, they are distinguished by the different vowels. Now let's move on to the next feature. The third feature is called L vocalization. Specifically, the L sound is pronounced as a vowel when it is a final consonant. Its exact pronunciation varies according to the vowel it follows. Let's hear some example words. In these words, the L sound is pronounced as U. So we have tell pronounced as tell, till pronounced as tiu. Girl, pronounced as go. The final L is not pronounced when following a back rounded vowel. For example, we have tall as to, tool as tu, which is homophonous with the number two. We have goal, pronounced as go, which is homophonous with the verb to go. And an extra syllable is added when following a diphthong ending in e. For example, tail is pronounced as tail. Tile 
is pronounced as tayo. Boil is pronounced as boyo. The syllabic L sound has the same pronunciation as in this case, so we have people pronounced as people. I've noticed that this feature also exists in Portuguese, so the spelling L is sometimes pronounced as an U in the same way, but I don't know if it also exists in the Portuguese accent of English. If you speak Portuguese, please tell me about that. The fourth feature is the pronunciations of the th sounds. There are two different th sounds in English, namely, the voiceless th as in the word thing, and the voiced th as in the word this. In Hong Kong English, the voiceless th sound is pronounced as same as the letter f. This feature is called th fronting and is found in many Southern English dialects, such as the Cockney accent. Some homophonous pairs are produced by this feature, so we have three and free, both pronounced as free in Hong Kong English. Thin, fin, both pronounced as fin. Thor, for, both pronounced as for. For the voiced th sounds, it is pronounced as same as the letter d. So the words this and father are pronounced as this and father, respectively. Some homophonous pairs produced by this feature are those and those. Both are pronounced as those. They and they, both as they. There, there, both as there. If the voice th sound is at the end of a morpheme, it is pronounced as the letter f, like the voiceless th sound as mentioned above. So we have breathe, pronounced as brief, breathing, pronounced as briefing. Of course, there are many other features of Hong Kong English, but unfortunately, we don't have enough time to go through all of them. If you like Hong Kong English, I can make more videos to talk about other features. I'm gonna wrap up this video by sharing some of my personal opinions about Hong Kong English. Recently, there is a commercial in which the Hong Kong celebrity William Chan speaks English. So this commercial has received lots of different comments and some people criticized on his English accent. I think this is just one example to show the attitude of people towards the Hong Kong English accent. In Hong Kong, people tend to think that the level of English correlates to the level of education, and speaking a British or American accent means better English, so some people feel ashamed of their English accent. Think about why you learn a language. Did you learn it just for passing the exam? Or did you learn it for watching dramas without subtitles? After all, it's about communication. It brings different people together. When you meet people from different countries, everyone speaks in a different accent. Therefore, the most important thing is that you get to know more about each other through speaking English. And accent is not what you're concerned about. Of course, Different people have different reasons to learn English. If one really likes the British culture, he can learn the RP accent and try to perfect it. But in most cases, it is definitely not a must to stick to the so-called British or American accents. Language is a tool to connect different people. It is way more than just an exam to show how educated you are. So whenever someone laughs at your accent, Remember this message and don't get discouraged. That's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoy it and see you in the next episode.